Mazel morons. Mazel morons. Josh, you're looking extra gorgeous today. Say more about ki- that. Is that a Kings hat? Are you a big LA Kings fan? Biggest. Love them. You love hockey. I love hockey. You don't like hockey. I don't like hockey, but you love hockey. Tell Say more about that. But you're a typical New York Jew who loves basketball. Like, it's a religion. Love it. And it's also a religion to, like, really not like hockey that much. Like, it is what it is. And is it, Like, I just, I don't know. Do Jews it, it, love basketball because it's the only place we can kind of compete in a sport? It's because, for whatever reason, Jews can hit that corner three, baby. We can we really spot can. up in the corner and swish that three. We're good at it. We're good at it. Uh, and honestly, you... It doesn't matter how tall you are, how athletic you are. Shooters shoot. Shooters shoot. It's also why Jews play a lot of golf because, like, it's the same thing. Shooters shoot. But hockey, hockey's tough. Hockey is a very physical sport. Um, It's funny. On Sunday, my son is in a basketball league, and so I was taking him out there for the first hour. It was, like, 9 in the morning. And then I'm walking by these other guys who, like, obviously have pickup leagues where they just play every Sunday. And... It was a gamut. I mean, these are not like young bucks. These are guys in their 40s, 50s, 60s who obviously play together all the time. And the level of shit talking just reinforced the idea for me that I will never, ever play basketball. Because I was like, this would hurt my feelings so bad that I would not be able to continue playing. That said, you're going to be a traveling, you're going to be a dad on a traveling team because your son, Max, is going to be fantastic. His shot is smooth as butter. Smooth is better. I get it. Home court advantage in the little shot thing in your garage. I get it. We're going to get him on a real hoop, 10 feet. Then we'll see how good he is. That said, fantastic. He's going to be great. So you're going to have to spend a lot of time, a lot of games. It's funny. My my good friend, uh, Dan Cruz, shout out. He, um, he, his son's a little older and, and we, he actually invited my, my son, Max and I to a USC women's basketball game. So we went to watch and it was fabulous. And uh, and there one the star player for the USC women's basketball team is her name is Juju, and mm. she is good. She is spectacular. <laughs> but you know the people they're rooting her on and they're screaming Jew, <laughs> Jew, <laughs> and I'm looking around going, should I get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody pull the fire alarm! <laughs> oh my god! I mean, I was like, I felt like I was in Dresden. I was like, what the. Fuck? is happening this is 1942 berlin (laughs) oh that's good Uh, have you been to a king's game this year i haven't been to a king's game this year last year my son was the i call him the puck boy but the bench kid basically it was so cool the la kings uh invited him and he got to stand at the tunnel as all the guys walk out and and give him pounds and my sister-in-law Taylor got to r- ride the Zamboni. It was it was the time of our lives. We we love it. I I just it's an an exceptional sport. Love that. My my issue with it, I think it's the same issue that I have with soccer. Mm. I really don't like soccer. I think I just don't like sports where it's hard to score. Fair. I like a ton of action. I that's like basketball. You get nine like you, you get what is it? At least like a hundred scores a game, right? Would would be that math. Football, you get a lot too. It's just it's it's a, you could wait a very very long time of what I perceive as no action in those sports. Yeah, it's an interesting thing, and I think it's worth talking about. And this will probably come out after the Super Bowl, but you know we had quite the weekend of playoffs, and I know that we're more of a female centric pod, and we love our queens, but we also love our queens who love sports, and it mm. should be said that the great Taylor Swift's boyfriend has made it to the Super Bowl, Travis Kelsey and the Kansas City Chiefs, and it's going to be against another team. I'm sure you're a fan of the San Francisco 49ers. We absolutely love the Niners. The Juice Checks, just family in our house. We love them. We love them. And I don't know if you've seen what Christian used check. She makes all of those unbelievable jackets that have gone viral. You saw Taylor Swift's jacket. They spoke about it on ESPN. Mm. Like she makes these amazing puffers, went viral for her jackets. Kyle had an amazing game. 49ers had an amazing half. The first half, they were absolutely terrible. But Claudia posted on her Instagram that she thinks they're going to win by three. And lo and behold, they won by three. Wow. What kind of sorcery is that? And I want to know, Josh, your Super Bowl prediction. My Super Bowl prediction is that the 49ers win by six. No basis. I just, as my son would say, I like their costume colors. 
I like their costume <laughs> colors. Uh, I, <laughs> um, I will say that the 49ers also beat the Chiefs 32 to 23. Mm. It's such a hard score to hit. I'm going to lose. How do you even get to 32? So for Super Bowl, who are you having over? Or mm. where are you watching? You're obviously watching. You're, you're a football family. This is a big, ooh, O'Brien time, right? My my father in law, an ex uh, uh, professional football player, we will probably watch it at their home, and it won't be fun because the kids are gonna be everywhere, and I'm gonna be chasing after the kids. I'm gonna be babysitting while like doing drive bys by every type of food possible. There's gonna be dips. There's gonna be. I'll probably wind up getting a couple hundred wings from Hot Wings Cafe. Mm. There'll be nine of us, but I'll be like, we're gonna need about two thousand wings. Because that's how I roll. Yep. Maybe some wings from Wingstop. We love Wingstop. We do love wings from Wingstop. I certainly might consider getting some wings from Wingstop, like the garlic parmesan offering. Shout out Wingstop. Extra crispy. <laughs> Extra credit. Um, um, what about you? And uh, I'm going to be with with the lovely family in Florida. <gasps> love uh, them. We are we are we are going to be watching at Jackie's house on her big, beautiful TV. I'm gonna make some kind of a recipe. I don't know what I'm gonna make yet, but wings are wings are essential. Wings are essential. And for everybody that's gonna tell me the boneless wings aren't wings, I completely agree, but that doesn't take away from the fact that they're delicious. You're taking, you're taking a chicken finger and completely submerging it in a honey mustard or in a barbecue sauce or in a buffalo sauce. That is an absolutely delicious meal. So maybe a boneless wing, a regular wing. I like a big sandwich, like a nice long sub. One year, I made a 30-foot sub. I made a 30-foot sub at my friend's house. I walked in, 30-foot-long piece of bread, enough meat. Yeah, uh, unbelievable. So, yeah, that's that's probably what I'll do. Maybe I'll make a big sub. I'm going to make a big sub. Okay, this was from some unsolicited source, but they dared to say, and this can't be true, that the number one Super Bowl food of 2023, the top big game food across the country is meatballs. Are the one <laughs> this can't be. This has got to be. This has got to be from the red meat lobby. It can't be. No way. Paid, paid, paid for by big meat. <laughs> it's got to be paid for by big meat. Here, here we go. Top seventeen Me most popular Super Bowl foods ranked from mashed. Let's see. Um, number six, sixteen. Anything football shaped. Fair enough. Uh, 15, the sad veggie platter. And this is crazy. The number 14 was nachos. I would think that would be way higher. Thoughts? Yeah, I would think that that would be way higher too. Mm. It's funny that the veggie platter is on there as the sad veggie platter. It is an automatic order. You have to order it. You do need to order it. And I just think it's only sad because you're not putting any effort in. And it can be better. And it can be welcome because... You need something to cut through all that grease. So the platter that you buy at like a Whole Foods, mm -hmm. no no good. The pre-cut celery, no the pre-cut carrot, the pre-cut old broccoli, and that ranch in the middle where somebody peels off the top plastic, throws it in your face, and is like, here, have a vegetable. That's no good. But a nice homemade veggie platter. A nice homemade veggie platter. Maybe you get a maybe you get some purple broccoli in there. Maybe you get a little jicama, right? Mm. Maybe you get a, a hummus, not just a ranch, like something something deep. I agree that you can do a veggie platter right. Speaking of hummus, you know, the other day <laughs> my wife was making an eggplant, like a, a, a version of her own little baba ganoush, and mm. I, uh, which is basically just like a blended. Uh, eggplant, oil, garlic, salt, delicious thing. Mayo. And I, and I tried it, and I was like, hmm, it's good. I said, did you put in put in any tahina? And she goes, what did you just say to me? And I was like, tahina. <laughs> and she goes, tahini? And I go, yeah, tahina. <laughs> and she goes, don't ever say that to me again. <laughs> By the way, you pronounced it perfectly. I Page. know. Paige, let him, this is in his blood. He's been saying tahina since he was born. It's in his blood, tahini. 
teeny. I'm half Sephardic, I think, from my dad's side, who I never met. Yeah. I mean, can't I just <laughs> embrace my roots? It's also nice to say things with a good... With, with the with the proper tongue. When I'm making my recipe videos, I put in a little cilantro in the voiceover. I'll say cilantro. Yeah, cilantro. Anything wrong with that? It's cilantro. It's not cilantro. It, it's cilantro. D- it, is cilantro um, Spanish for soap greens? Because that's how it tastes to me. It tastes like soap. Interesting. I like cilantro. I wouldn't eat it plain. Fair. But it's good in things. Are you eating it plain? <laughs> no. You just, you just go in a... Going to the grocery store, getting a thing of cilantro. <laughs> Damn it, this tastes like soap. I'm good, babe. <laughs> I think I've developed a little more of a taste of it. I'll tell you what recently that has been turning me off, and I can't believe it, but maybe it's because I'm. one day I will grow into Guy Fieri. Eggs. Eggs are starting to turn me off. Really? Yeah. In what capacity? How, how often were you eating them? How were you eating them? You know, I used to love like a, a, um, a nice, you know, a... Uh, what, what do you call it? Over easy, uh, over some some lovely toast. I used to love a nice poached egg on an avocado toast, or perhaps a carbonara, uh, or even um, what, what else did I like egg on? Yeah, I, I mean, I love a matzo brai, but I think that's because I like cinnamon sugar and or sour cream and applesauce. But Delish. Eggs in general have been freaking me out, especially like scrambled eggs. Interesting. Yeah, I'm I'm an omelet connoisseur. Right. I absolutely love an omelet. Mm. That said, when you go to a nice resort and they take the omelet and then they just dump all the filling in the middle and fold it, disgusting. Do you know what I'm talking about? Either you can Awful. have the vegetables in the egg, right? Or on the egg. Toppings belong in the egg. That's right. Absolutely. But scrambled eggs, you know, it, it depends on where you get it. Like the Delta Sky Lounge can absolutely make you terrified of scrambled eggs. When you get that whole huge tin and it's just just like loose, it's it's no good. I it's just, no good. I think it was overdone. Like I think there was such a decade of the add an egg. And it's similarly for me with avocado. I'm like, you know what? I'm just, I think, you know what? It's not you, it's me, but I need a break. I need a break. It's interesting. Are, I wonder, are we over eggs? I still love eggs, but maybe, maybe you're onto something. How long can we like the exact same thing over and over and over again? Maybe there's probably a better source of protein. There's definitely a better source of protein. Let's be honest. Every egg's a conflict egg because those are not coming from happy chickens, you know? Mm -mm. No, they are not. No, they're not. No, they are not. It sucks. No, they're not. And chickens- You like hard-boiled eggs? Again, hard, hard-boiled eggs reminds me of substitute teachers. I just feel like if I see a hard-boiled egg in Tupperware, I go, I'm late for humanities. Because just every public school teacher in New York was sucking down <laughs> over uh, just disgusting hard-boiled disgusting. eggs through their like coffee-stained teeth. I absolutely hate them. And shout out my sister-in-law, Olivia. Love her to death. But she makes her daughter Michaela's lunch. And I'll see her cut up those... Hard boiled eggs, and I'll see her putting a scoop of tuna, and I'm gonna say, This kid's gonna have no friends. You're <laughs> oh. sending her in. She's, no one's gonna talk to her. You just sliced hard boiled eggs and a scoop of tuna. She's probably eating it with her hands. They're gonna make these nicknames. They're never gonna leave her. Can you imagine Michaela's toots in two hours after she has lunch? <laughs> She'll clear a room. <laughs> She'll clear a room. She'll clear a room. I do like occasionally I'll tolerate an egg salad. Mm. Oh, I love, I love egg salad sandwich. I, lo- I do like that. <sighs> I think it's just the mayonnaise, though. The mayonnaise. The mayo binds the egg. The mayo binds the tuna. It binds the chicken. Mayo. Mayonnaise. What's your favorite mayo brand? I don't think we've ever spoken about I this. I do actually think we have spoken about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we should talk about it again. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest. I would be more inclined to have a veganaise made with a nice avocado oil from like a uh, or, Ugh. or if I'm gonna, <laughs> if what, I, what are you, what are you, what are you with Big Marshall? You, it's like Big Vegan. I do Big like, Marshall, but I, I or Primal Foods has. Uh, if you're gonna have mayonnaise, it can only be one of two things: either you have to make it yourself, which who, who are you, or it's got to be made with avocado oil, which Primal Foods almost everything's made with avocado oil because it's gross. Why? Because of all of like the bad shit in it, like the soybean oils and all that crap. Yeah. But Hellman's is just so good. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, like, forget about, like, everything is carcinogenic. Everything, right? You walk down the street, you walk funny, you're going to get cancer. It's just the world that we live in. 
So throw that all out the window. The best is Hellman's. It's got to be the best. There's so many people that are like, Dukes, Dukes, Dukes. Is it your Dukes? If, is it insensitive if we rank um, cancer to, uh, from best to worst? <laughs> the Good Guys podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Look, Squarespace is your all-in-one tool to make a website, and it's going to help you to succeed online. It's a website platform for entrepreneurs. So, like, if you want to easily sell custom merch, which the good guys, we sell merch, you can create a passive income stream that engages your audience and scales your brand. Boom. You do that with Squarespace. It's an easy setup. I know creating a website can seem super intimidating, and if you're not familiar with, like, you know, I don't know, uh, writing code you don't have to do any of that okay Squarespace makes your life easy but again if you want to do like an online store they also have a great video collection so they'll host video content they'll organize your video library and showcase your content on on beautiful video pages and here's what's really important their analytics are crazy so they use insights to grow your business though you'll be able to learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are most effective we at The Good Guys, our website's going to be up and running soon, and it's all going to be through Squarespace because it's just easy. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash goodguys to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I'm a big fan of Squarespace. It's a place you want to go to start your website, and it's going to be integral to your business. So one more time, go to squarespace.com slash good guys. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. I would say probably the worst has to be brain, right? Um, okay. So we're, you want to start with the worst. Okay. Yes. I would say oh, brain... Okay. A glioblastoma yeah. multiform, which is the most, um, <laughs> which is what? Of your boy's you smart. The, your boy's smart. Of course, learned. you know the name. I go in brain. My next one was going to be shin. <laughs> like, shin. <laughs> and you, isn't, that you a have, Hebrew, isn't that a Hebrew <laughs> character? And shin, Gimel? Have, <laughs> and you have the scientific name. <laughs> Just. No, I like it. Okay. One is brain. What's two? Yeah, glioblastoma multiform, uh, which is <laughs> the most common type of brain tumor and sadly the most fatal. Um Ugh, and damn. yeah, it's very it's very, very challenging. I know a lot about the brain. I'm a big fan of the show Lennox Hill. Shout out um Dr. John Bookvar. Um I'm I'm a big fan. What's two? Uh two has gotta be pancreas. Mm, that's no a good. bad that Steve Jobs had that. That's bad. Very, yeah. very fatal. Very oh, people are so but, triggered right now. I know it. I'm so sorry for anyone's loss. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Is three breast? Is three breast? Can be de- depends on the mutation. Yeah. 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 Four shin. Shin. Yeah. No, let's go. <laughs> let's start getting light. Like I feel like testicular is pretty easy to just like boom, you pop one of those babies out. Done. You know? Thank God. Thank God. That Thank can God. be, or like thyroid, thyroid's a quick one, which I don't mean to bring yeah. it up. You know, you're on the Ozemps, you never know. You know, it's I one mean, thing. We're, 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 we, you, you are on the side. You're on Jillian Michaels, big anti-Ozempic. <laughs> you're, just, you're just upset that you lost weight before you had Ozempic. Should we get to some speak pipes? I would love to do a speak pipe. I would love to hear from a moron. From our resident morons, if you want any advice, if you have a question for us, if you would like us to talk to you in any way, go to speakpipe.com slash good guys. Uh, keep it brief, but we will we will be glad to talk to you. And I've got some got some good ones here. And I really we're, will go for it. No, just quickly. We're also I got a bunch of DMs about this. Uh, if you want to leave us a what are you nuts? You think it's nuts enough? Feel free to leave whatever you want on SpeakPipe. Sure, we're here to give you advice, but if you want to just uh, say something to us, if you want to, uh, I don't know, give us some money. Uh, yes. If, I, I don't know, like just invite us to some l- lavish resort. Say whatever you want on SpeakPipe. Yeah, shout out. If you want to invite us to the Four Seasons Punta Mita, I am in. I will take my family and I will post, 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 post away. I like to, I like to people please when they give me free things. Absolutely in. And shout out the Boca Raton. We're going to be hosting hosting Josh there. I'm going to be there. Shout out the Boca Raton. And if any other hotels want a shout out, all they got to do, host us. Wow. 
It's incredible. I, I'm cutting that out. <laughs> um, okay, first, let's hear from Down and Demi from Peter. Hey, Josh and Ben. Down under Moron here. I can confirm that there is indeed a men shortage down here in Australia. I'm 36 and time is a ticket. Who's going to look after me when I'm old? I need to get the ball rolling. Do you have any advice? How do I meet a man? How do I lower my standards so there is someone available for me? Help me. I reckon she's having a hard time, Ben. Down under moron. (laughs) (laughs) So good. That's the name of the episode, Down Under Moron. (laughs) Um, uh, It's, oof. Man, if there's a male shortage, I think you just got to move. Like that's the, that sounds, maybe you just, I don't know, maybe the guys there aren't for you. You sound lovely. Clearly you have a great taste in podcasts. You sound incredible, Peter. You're just adorable and lovely. Is her name Peter, like the chip? P E T A, like yeah, Peter. Or or like the ant the animal rights organization. Yes, like the animal rights organization. All right, so honestly, I'd recommend changing your name. <laughs> I think I think that'll really help with uh, getting you some new opportunities. Maybe like a nice Rachel. <laughs> I think Pete. I think Pete is tough. Any of Abra- Abraham <laughs> Abraham's kids, a Sarah, a Rivka, uh, a Aaliyah. <laughs> You could even go non-Jewish. You could go Courtney. PETA. PETA's tough. PETA's tough. <laughs> I was Marshall? Say, no, the second half of the question was, how do I lower my standards? Which I think is interesting. It is interesting, isn't it? Right? Wow, Marshall. We don't know what she, we don't know what she looks like. How do we know? Like, I, I, It's I not all know. about looks, Ben. Well, if she's lowering her standards, we need to know how far we're lowering it to. And if it's justified, maybe she should be holding that standard. Yeah, but she could also, you know, she could also be a closet case where she needs to, you know, hide in a closet because she's a four, (laughs) but she's got high standards because she's a real smart broad. I'm cutting that out. (laughs) (laughs) Got it. So you think that she's talking about lowering her standards intellectually. Typically, when you say lower standards, it has everything to do with looks. That's it. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm now going to start going for dumb guys. I mean, I don't mean to air out like my sister-in-law, Taylor. I love you, Taylor. But she is just like the bee's knees. She happens to be single. I don't think she'd mind me saying it. She is like stunning, cool, career person, has has it all going on. And sometimes when I ask her what's going on in the dating game, she'll say things like, I would never date someone from my work or I would never date someone from XYZ. I go, well, how are you ever going to meet people? Huh? Yeah. How are you ever going to meet? The apps. The apps. And she would never do an app. And I go, Tay Tay, what's going on here? Maybe you got to, you know, lower the bar slightly. How old is Taylor? She's 36. Plenty of time. We're good. All right. Plenty of time. Peter, too. She can move to, she can move to Australia and be with Peter. <sighs> that would be cute. <laughs> I, listen, I need a, a reason to go I'm to so- Melbourne. I'm sorry. Will you agree with me that she needs to change her name? No, that's mean. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's not nice. (laughs) Peta, I think you're lovely. I think, unfortunately, it is one of the... What if her last name's Griffin? (laughs) Peta Griffin. (laughs) 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 Now that's good. (laughs) I don't know why. I can't meet anyone. My name's Peta Griffin. (laughs) What, Marshall? What if her last name's Brad? (laughs) Peta Brad. (laughs) <laughs> maybe, oh, 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 Peter, maybe you find a nice guy from Boston because he'll already say your name perfectly. Yeah, this is my wife, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I'm sorry. Husbands don't want a man. It's, her name is Peter. It's like Peter Pan. This is my wife, Peter. Isn't that a name from Hunger Games, Peter? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it is. It is? I don't know. I mean, I, I've only, I only saw the first one. I don't know. After so I saw I. No Hard Feelings, I have a big crush on Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> so I can't keep bringing her up. Jennifer Lawrence is fantastic. She is. Did I ever tell you, there's not really a story to this, but we were at the same wedding in Morocco. In Morocco? Yeah, we were both at the same wedding in Morocco. You've been to Morocco, Marrakesh, Casablanca? Yes, I have. For a wedding. Fantastic place. The resorts, you think we have five stars here? Psh- Throw those out the window. Five I'm, stars there, A+. Plus. I'm dying to go to Morocco. It's like very high on my list. 
I want to go to the shuk. I want to go to the bazaar. I want to go. Uh, I want to go negotiate for some spices. So we'll do. We're going to do a two prong trip. We're going to do an Israel trip, and we're going to do a Morocco. Fantastic. We'll call Brian Kelly, charter the plane. It's done. Yes, I love that. I love that idea. It w- it would be an honor and a pleasure. Maybe we maybe we stop in Greece too. I've always wanted to go to Greece. Never been. I've never been either. I I love olive oil. Love Constantinople and love the early uh, roots of democracy. I love it. And Zeus. Don't you just want to see a nice statue of Zeus? Yes, I, I love mythology. Um, but, Peter, before we let you go, and I know you're not here, <laughs> I just don't want you to be too hard on yourself. It's not easy finding the right person, but inevitably, I think there has to, I wouldn't call settling. I would say that there's just going to be like, you're going to have to become very clear on what your one or two non-negotiables are. And then you might have to negotiate on everything else. But if you find someone who checks the boxes of one and two, then maybe you're okay with the fact that they like have a comb over and they're from Dorchester, Massachusetts. And yes, all jokes aside, don't change your name. Pete is a lovely name. Maybe it's a family name. Maybe you're named after your father. It's a fantastic name. <laughs> and in, ter- <laughs> in terms of uh, potentially lowering your standards, just make sure that you know what's really important to you. What's really important. Don't give up what's really important. Maybe give up the things that are less important. Okay, next one from Jessica. Hi, guys. I love your podcast. And I, just like Josh, have a hard time not overthinking about every little scenario in my head. And I have one that sticks um, that I think about every once in a while. And it's it's kind of a graphic one, so I'll try to put it in Christmas terms. So my ex had jingle bells that were extremely stretchy um, to the point where I could cover. It was kind of like silly putty. <laughs> I could cover my whole hand with it, or you could cover a banana with it. Like a full, you could cover a full banana with it and still have extra stretch to cover more if you wanted to, which I found fascinating for about five years. And then when I switched to my current boyfriend, I was shocked that there was little to no stretch. And it reminded me that 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 stretch was just like a little unicorn one-off. And it makes me think, huh, maybe I should have told him that he should have gone to the doctors because there was a significant amount. And so I'm wondering, should I have said something to him? Or even once I started dating my boyfriend in the beginning, should I have got, reached back out and been like, you need to go to a doctor? Or is this completely ridiculous? This guy has long nuts. <laughs> right? This guy has long nuts. He has long nuts. But her new okay. boyfriend doesn't. Maybe the issue's okay. with the new boyfriend, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if I've ever, have I told this story? I'm going to I'm going to venture to guess no. I I have I have long nuts. Oh man. <laughs> we can't get this close, Ben. And I and I can tell you that I know exactly how it happened. I can just hear my mom's voice right now. This is a part of the podcast where I hear from her after and she goes, "Was it necessary?" Well, talk. Barb, you'll see. It's a medical condition. <laughs> to talk I was about bo- the sexual organs. Sorry, go for it. <laughs> On the day that I was born, I came out of my mother with a very, very, very large nutsack filled with fluid. Apparently, my dad said it was bright red. And the first thing they did, needle in, suck out the fluid. And so I was left with maybe a larger nutsack unless it's a normal nutsack i it's a big it's they're big nuts yeah see this is a little bit too much big nuts but so maybe this guy also had too much fluid when he was born honestly it's a disability she shouldn't be mean to the disabled he was probably born with something it is what it is and the new guy with like the tight nut i don't know it's it's less fun you can't like pick him up and throw him over your shoulder josh I just wonder how this woman was able to figure out that an actual banana could be covered. And I'm imagining this was the scenario <laughs> that she was going down on said big balls. And he, and she was like, ow, muscle cramp, muscle cramp. But she didn't have a muscle cramp. She, I need potassium. And she runs and gets a banana. And then she quickly, for scale, checks that it is actually the size of said, um, let's just call it Jingle Bells, because I, I don't want to hear from you, Barb. I know you're right, Mom. This is a gross segment, and I'll get through it. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I would say it, that's... Com- it, look, if after five years it didn't kill him, probably won't. And I would say if it didn't bother you, it won't bother the next person. And, uh, and be happy with your new boyfriend with normal anatomy. Two things. One, I didn't hear the banana piece. It must have cut out. That is a very big sack. And I want to be very clear. My sack is nowhere near banana height. Nowhere near. Just just to just to make sure that we've covered off on There's those There's variants of bananas. True. It could have been a plantain. A <laughs> plantain, right. Plantanos. Um, so tough. They're so tough. They are. Um, yeah. Yeah. And But she's worried about him being sick. What? Long nuts? There's nothing. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. There's not. There's nothing. Nothing wrong. It's just a little. It is what it is. Marshall, Ed's character. Marshall, would that be a deal breaker for you? Am I allowed to ask that? Am I going to get r- r- written up by HR? In which case, I, I no, take no, it no, all no. back. No, no, no. Uh, and no, I don't care. <gasps> you heard it here first, guys. Marshall doesn't care. <laughs> doesn't care. My doesn't DM's care at all. <laughs> <laughs> You're um, just gonna have all these people with long nuts. That's right. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, the last speak pipe is a fun one from David or David. Hey, guys, I have a crazy story for you, um, and I want to just know what you would do in this situation. So um, my previous job, I worked there for three or four years, and my boss was probably one of my really, really good friends, I would say. And uh, I was doing really well in the at my job. I was moving up. You know, I was doing really good on all my performance indexes, all that good stuff. He walks in one day and just fires me for no reason. He doesn't give me a reason. He just says, you know, we got to let you go. We're going in a different direction. I was, I was blown away, but I packed up my desk and left. And he said, we're going to, we'll still be friends and all this and that. I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. Um, so six or seven months goes by and I don't really hear from him that much. And I get a random call from an old coworker and he says, you'll never believe it. Let's call him John. John just got fired for embezzlement. He's been embezzling for years. And the reason you got fired is because he tried to pin it on you. Mm. And then we, his wife, his wife has a, she started a photography page and all of her posts on Instagram and Facebook are all Google stock images. So she tries to book clients claiming her Google stock image photos are hers and so people will pay her for her pictures thinking that they're getting the Google stock quality when they're just, when she sucks. So what would you do in this situation? I want to cut these people off completely. What do you think? Wow. David, 1-800-these-people. Um, cut, cut, cut them out with, a he- with an emotional hedge clippers and sue your former employer. Cut him out immediately. We don't need to be friends with people like this. Try to pin it on you. Run as far away from these people as humanly possible. And uh, to the person who's trying to make, to his wife, who's trying to make a living scamming people with the the photographs, there's no reviews? There's no reviews? You thought that you were getting this beautiful, what is it, black magic? Is that the name of the camera? What's that amazing camera? Is that not what it's called? Black the black magic, magic? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, the black, amazing camera. And then all of a sudden you get this, this iPhone, you know, it's very simple. Bad reviews, maybe leave bad reviews or actually don't get involved. You don't want enemies like this. You don't want enemies like this. Just distance yourself. You know that meme, uh, Homer Simpson backing up into the hedges. That's you. <laughs> Back up into the hedges, disappear. You'll never see him again. I'll tell you what. I- I'll tell you about a bad friend that I had, David, where my buddy Jeff, we used to have a great time. We'd go on vacations. He was really wealthy at a plane. Suddenly he dies, and all of a sudden my name's out there on this, like, in quotes, manifest. Like, and I'm getting shit because all I wanted to do was have a good time with my friend Stephen Hawking. I just wanted to hear astrophysics lectures. And suddenly, well, I'm to blame? It's not. You know, you got to be careful who you hang out with. I really felt bad for you. I'm like, wow, Josh had a childhood friend named Jeff who passed. <laughs> I'm so sorry to, to hear. It's a misdirection. <laughs> that was very good. Did you hear? Oh, this is the best. So Neuralink, which is Elon Musk's company where he's implanting chips in people's brains in a way of like basically hot wiring the brain. He said the first thing that will allow will be something like telepathy. So he literally wrote a tweet, which was something to the effect of imagine if Stephen Hawking had this implant 
he would no longer have to use any sort of machine to vocalize what he was feeling or thinking. He could immediately just think it and then a machine would decipher it and dictate exactly what he was thinking, to which I thought the first thing he would use it for would be to say, <laughs> hit up Jeffy, let's scramble the jets. <laughs> <laughs> How frightening would that be? Something that transcribes your thoughts. Oh my God. Terrifying. That is that is terrifying. I got a text earlier from Claudia saying, hey, you're writing in the group notes app. I don't know if you know that, but you're writing no. in this family note. And think it wasn't me. It was my brother-in-law who was writing in it. But it made me think, you know, notes are very personal. And the idea that one could be writing personal things in a group notes app is terrifying. That and is that's, extremely and that's scary. Not even, and that's not even close to your thoughts being transcribed. Holy smokes. That's absolutely terrifying. And yeah, that I could just imagine myself doing that and uh, getting in a lot of trouble with a lot of family members. My What Are You Nuts is, I think it's it can't only be a New York thing. It has to just be somewhere where it gets really, really cold and you have these big buildings. Uh but when it gets really cold in New York and you're in these old buildings, Josh, you know this well. Mm. The radiator starts pumping that heat and he can't turn it off. And that is just a what are you nuts. I'm sitting in here. Yes. I'm I'm scorching hot. I'm scorching hot. There's nothing to shut. He can't shut anything. And this is this dry type of heat that either you know it or you don't. It's a sinus infection in 30 minutes. It goes straight up. My lips are chapped. My elbows, I have psoriasis. I have a sinus infection. All in an hour's time. All in an hour's time. What are you nuts? Figure this out. Figure out how to heat a building without burning off my eyebrows. Absolutely. What are you nuts? Um, that's what happens when you live in a place with pre-war buildings of a city that's literally falling apart. Um, shout out New York. Love it. <laughs> um, I Okay. So my what are you nuts is I love 7-Eleven. Big 7-Eleven guy. Love it. Love. You love it, Ben? I love it. And I was just in DFW. They have it in the airport. It's just fabulous. And as fabulous. I've, as I've gotten older, I love the brand 7-Eleven. I like I, I eat their egg salad sandwiches. Sometimes I'll go as far as the tuna. Um oh, I'll pop, you know what? I'll buy a Zin. I'll pop a Zin in my mouth after said sandwich to really cool out the old nerves, get a nice little nicotine hit. <laughs> um and <laughs> by the way. The the congressman Chuck Schumer is going after Zinn, to which mm -hmm. I wrote to what, what Marsha? Uh, did oh, you? Oh, did you oh, sorry. I don't know. I, maybe I heard it in the headphones from something. Sorry. Um. So by the way, the congressman Chuck Schumer is going after Zinn, which is literally a nicotine pouch. Let us enjoy our nicotine in peace. No. Yeah, it's absolutely sick, and it's silly, and it's just like if the Gen Zers. Here's the thing. And this is not about Chuck Schumer. This is just in general. If if people seem to be profiting off of something other than cigarettes, people get very upset. I don't know why jewels are banned. I don't know why the flavor I jewels do. are banned. I, I well, do. Why? Look, uh, here's this at least was my um, sort of observation was that jewels, first of all, you you never use them, did you? No, I wasn't a jeweler. It was a, I wasn't a jeweler. Um, it was a, it it was like the crack of nicotine inhalants. I mean, the level of nicotine you were getting, and what I couldn't believe was how many of my my wife's young cousins, like not her cousins, but her cousins' friends, who like literally like ninth graders, eighth graders, tenth graders, sucking down these jewels. And like, there was no air of like, that it was even remotely bad for you. And I would here and there use a jewel whenever a friend would have, you know, one on them and it, my lungs hurt the next day. So I think it was actually a little more. Bad. No, they're, they're terrible for you, but you're not here to tell me that Zinn is good for you. It's not good for you. That doesn't mean that it should be illegal. Like there, it's an 18 plus product. It's a product that like we should educate around the same way that we educate around cigarettes, the same way that you can get cancer from cigarettes. These are the same way that alcohol, like too much out, like, you know what I mean? Like these are, these are products. I, I, it's, I don't know. It's it, to me, it's, it, it, it's just, but I know, like, what you, I know what you mean, but in the grand hierarchy, there's like at the top actual cigarettes and then there's vaping under it, which I still think is negative and detrimental. I actually think things like, like I think a Zen is in the Nicorette category, which is like literally inert. Like 
other than like the mild stimulant effect, I actually don't think there's anything negative about it. But what about the fact that it burns through your lip? Like I've had a Zin. I thought that there was a hole in my lip. That- I tried it once. Maybe I'm just a wuss. Maybe <laughs> I'm just a wuss. But I thought, I thought, I literally looked. I'm like, oh, that's my tooth. No, that's the cute part. It's like when I, I, <laughs> I started chewing Nicorette in my early 20s because I wanted to develop a smoking habit. So I started easy. And uh, <laughs> and I was like, I remember the first time I'm chewing on it and I started getting the hiccups and then I got sick to my stomach. And my buddy said, that's part of the ride. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, once you get past that, you're going to be flying. And I was like, that's, you're right. That's, fu- that's, that's part of the ride. <laughs> I also just love Zinners. Ch- that's the thing. Chuck Schumer, what are you nuts? Leave the Zinners alone. We can agree to just agree on the jewel. We agree on the Zin. Totally. Look, we all know it, whether you're you're doing an, an Osama Zin Laden or an Oprah Zinfrey, right? Just the culture. Do it. do it for the culture. Yes, do it for the culture. Um, Okay, so my what are you nuts is I go to a 7-Eleven near my son's school every day. Sometimes I get a nice 24-ounce coffee. Sometimes I get a sandwich. <laughs> and, then, and then I have sin to yeah. get through. You said before, I forgot, I have a tuna and I have a zin to cut through the tuna. <laughs> yeah, I, sometimes I have a 24-ounce coffee and a zin, and I've been sober 16 years. <laughs> Um, and the other day I went to my local 7-Eleven and I saw a beautiful sign very proudly hung in the front, a banner, a printed banner that said 7-Eleven under new management. (laughs) What are you nuts? You're 7-Eleven. This doesn't impact me in any way. Just be glad that there's ownership at all. You don't need to like, oh, are are you going to be improvising on the 7-Eleven brand? Is this 7-Eleven going to be selling, I I don't know, challah? Like, you're 7-Eleven. You got smokes. You got snacks. You got drinks. You got taquitos up front. What are you nuts? I don't need to know it's under new management. Oh, and I thought this was funny because the guy behind the counter, I think, knew who I was or knew me from social media. And as I walked up, he goes, hey, how are you? I said, good. He goes, how's your social life? I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, you trying to hook up? <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's your yeah. social life. Under new management. It's like when you walk into a Starbucks and they show the employee of the month. Who gives a rat's ass? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Give me my coffee. That barista master. <laughs> they care. The brew master. Do you know that in the Starbucks hierarchy, if you have a black apron, you are considered a brew master? Really? Yeah. I would say that if you did want to radicalize someone against the human race, have them work at a Starbucks or any kind of front facing, um, just nonstop job like that, because you must see the worst dregs. I was thinking about this the other day. My wife used to work for this company uh, that did like a print, like they, they did an apparel line and they, some of the apparel had a like printed, uh, you know, phrasing on it. So they did a party one night and a lot of influencer types, you know, the lowest of the lows, the real dregs (laughs) of the world. And LA influencer models, just like, what are you nuts? And, and I remember they were doing prep, they were pressing the sweatshirts at the party, right? So you could literally go in. It was like the giveaway as part of the party that you'd show up and you'd get there and you'd be like, oh, I love a sweater that says, uh, you know, I love good guys. And they'd be like, great, when you leave, it'll be ready for you. But of course, like it takes a minute. You have to heat up the massive press. And a lot of people came quickly and then a lot of people are leaving quickly. So I jump behind the counter, humble Harry over here. I don't mind. Give a little helping hand. And so I'm like helping because there's not enough people to get these sweatshirts done. And let me tell you, I have never quite experienced the level of vitriol and just like, what do you mean it's not ready? Like, darling, I know you have 8,000 fucking followers on Vine and you think you're like, (laughs) you know, uh, the most famous person alive. But like, yeah, it's going to take a minute. I, I could not believe how quickly rude people got and I'm like why are you yelling? why are you talking to me I'm famous Josh Peck over here I can only imagine what a civilian would get <laughs> crazy right uh, crazy crazy honestly there are just some things that should be automated 
Starbucks should be automated. You should put in, I want a black coffee, one Splenda, a little bit of milk, and they should, it should be robots. It should be robots. Most things shouldn't be robots. I'm a fan of jobs. But making my cup of coffee seems like something very easy for a robot to do. Well, what an episode this has been. <laughs> we deeply love you all. Thank you for listening. Rate, review, subscribe. That five-star rating and that review really helps. It really, really helps. Oh, um, this episode might come out uh, a few days prior to Ben and I are doing our first speaking engagement together for a little something called the BBYO in Orlando, Florida on the 17th. So if you're young, Jewish, I don't think you have to be Jewish, but there's going to be a lot of Jews. So if you're easily uh, discomforted by Jews, then I wouldn't recommend coming. <laughs> but if you're young and Jewish, then you should come. Jewish teens, come see us speak. It's going to be a really, really great time. Orlando, Florida. Maybe we'll see you at Disney World after. Maybe we won't. And yeah, five stars. Send it to a friend. Apple, Spotify, all the places. Josh's YouTube. Because if you don't see us interacting, what's the point? You'll miss the fact I'm wearing a t-shirt that says... Uh, panic at the Costco. Josh is wearing a King's t-shirt. Our beautiful no. merch. You see, merch, Marshall's merch. A, the, merch. Marshall looks fantastic. We saw him. You gotta watch us on YouTube. We love you. Marshall has a beautiful ginger mullet and he's just our <laughs> gorgeous gazelle and we love him for it. <laughs> love.